Lauren just wrote in saying, George has learned to stand up in his crib. He gets himself into the corner and he can't figure out how to get down. <laughs> It's really, really cute, you know, when you're not going through it. But I remember my daughter doing it when she learned to sit up. She would, like, get stuck in a sit-up position, and then she'd start to fuss in the middle of the night because she didn't know how to lay herself back down. So it's super, super cute, especially once you've passed through it. So she says, George cries and cries until I come in and I lie him down, and the cycle repeats until I nurse him to sleep. Some people say to go in as soon as he gets up and put him back down, but he thinks it's a game. And also her naps have started to fall apart because of this as well. So what, what can she do? So this is really common. I mean, there's a few good things to point out about this, Lauren. The first is that, again, this is a great sign that George is developing and he's hitting his milestones as he should. And I'm sure it's super cute to watch him pulling up to stand during the day <laughs> when you're rested. The first step I have, which is pretty easy to implement, is to let him practice let him practice this new skill often during the day. So give him the you know wide open living room floor, something to help pull himself up and say, go at it, George, just go for it. And let him practice and practice and practice and practice to help him hopefully uh, master the skill sooner. Now the other tip I have, let's say you're going through this, you're not Lauren, but you're one of the many other parents going through this right now. And you find that your baby is suddenly awake at night and he's on all fours and he can't get down, or he's sitting up and he can't get down, or he's standing and he can't get down. But if he's not upset about it, if he's just awake and kind of maybe like rah, 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 talking, maybe groaning a bit or just chatting or quiet and just practicing and practicing and practicing, leave him. He's not upset, so I wouldn't go in and interfere with him. I wouldn't go in and get him more upset or uh, stimulate him too much and then he's really going to need your help getting back to sleep. Now it seems kind of weird. You're like, I don't want to leave him. I know he's, he's sitting up and he can't get down. He needs my help. Again, this is really short lived. I remember going through it myself with my daughter and she's sitting up and she couldn't get down and I wanted to run in there, but we waited and we waited and finally she fell asleep. The first night she fell asleep sitting up with her head against the rails of the crib. But this was, you know, one or two nights and then she quickly learned how to get herself back down and then it wasn't an issue anymore. So if your baby's mastering a new skill and it's disrupting their sleep, even if they're up for 30 minutes in the night and you're thinking he should be sleeping, I should go help him get back to sleep. Again, if he's not upset by it, then I would wait and just give him that space to practice on his own. He might lose a little bit of sleep that night. That's okay. Make sure he naps often throughout the next day. But the last thing you want to do is interfere and create dependent sleep associations or props, right? So leave him. If he is upset, if he's crying out for you and he seems upset like is happening with little George, then what I would do is I would go to him and I would uh, lay him down once. So he's standing, he can't get down. I'm standing and I can't get down. I'd go to him, give him a kiss, pick him up, and then I would lay him back down. And then I would say the same sleep uh, phrases that you say at bedtime, you know, whether it's time for sleeping or night night or whatever it is, I would say that to him and I put him back down. If he jumps right back up and is like, hey, let's play, then you know, okay, um, that's it. I know it's going to become like a jack-in-the-box thing. It's going to become a game, and I would not lay him back down. Um, I would leave him again to work it out. If he's super, super upset and you've tried everything and you've laid him back down once and he's still crying for ages and you're trying, you know, you're doing anything you can, what I would suggest to you, Lauren, is try not to add Try not to go all the way back to giving full hands-on support. So what I would do is start with the most hands-off, okay? So if you're standing by his crib and you're singing to him and giving him verbal reassurance for several minutes and it's not working and it's not helping to calm him, okay, then move to the next step up. I would then put myself over the bed, hover over the bed a little bit, and I would pat his bottom, I would rub his head, I would scratch his back, hold his hand, whatever it is that he really likes that helps to calm him and settle him. Um, in the hopes that he will then, you know, get back down and fall asleep on his own. I wouldn't rush to pick him up, scoop him up, get him to feed back to sleep, put him back in the bed for several reasons. First of all, if you've weaned him down to none or one night feed, you don't want to start creating a night feed habit um, if he doesn't need to eat more often in the night. And also you're going to the, the full other extreme of now feeding my baby to sleep. And as I covered in the previous questions, that's gonna, you know, if it's two nights or so, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And then once this passes, then you can say, okay, we're gonna go back to the steps that we've done before to teach you how to sleep well, that you did in 21 days to peace and quiet. And then it'll probably adapt really well. 
But if it's happening for almost a week and suddenly you're running to him and you're pulling him out of his bed and you're feeding him back to sleep and it's happening for like five, six, seven nights, multiple times in the night, then even when this phase passes, what you'll probably find is that now this is his new habit. And he's like, great, now mom comes and feeds me throughout the night and I fall asleep feeding and here we go. And then suddenly you've got to unlearn all of these sleep props. So I would try really, really hard to keep him in his bed as best as you can and to comfort him in another way. Um, try to not feed, try to not pick him up, uh, try to comfort him while he's in his bed. And again, try not to get caught in this game of jack in the box, you know, jack in the box. He's going to master the skill in just a matter of a few days. So you really have to ride this out. I just had a mom in my program, I think it was last month, and her little guy was doing the same thing. He was about eight months and he was learning to sit up and he couldn't get back down. And she's like, what do I do? This is the worst thing in the whole world. And I just kept saying, stay strong, stay strong. And she did, finally she wrote to me and she goes, he finally figured it out, he can get himself back down and he's now sleeping really, really well and I'm so happy that I didn't create all these new sleep crutches for him. So Lauren, try your hardest, stay strong, get your partner to help um, if possible in the night. So I hope that that helps Lauren and George and let me know how it goes, keep us updated.